Welcome back to TFL Talking Trucks. As always, I am Andrei Smirnov. And today I'm Nathan Adlin. Just today? You said as always. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we're not changing our names. Uh, okay. Dude, uh, this show, well, it's the beginning of 2021. Right. And uh, in the, on this episode, I want to actually summarize kind of the sales, what happened in the truck world mm -hmm. in the United States. For 2020 right and then actually look at some of the trends and what's happening in the pickup truck world for 2021 that sounds good congratulations you have now tuned into tfl talk where we discuss everything automotive whether it's cars or trucks this is the one place where you can be sure to get independent and honest reviews let's get back to the show right now so dude uh yeah we i mean 2020 was a tough year no matter what <laughs> Around the world, it was yes. a tough year, yeah. Yes, but we're focusing on the United States sales, so we're not talking about Canadian sales, right. Mexico. Uh, we're based here in the U.S., mm -hmm. so we're focused on what's happening here. Well, not only that, but the U.S. truck sales, I mean, it's a massive chunk for all automakers that do sell any type of truck in the United States. Yep, and so let's start like this. Let's talk about mid-sized trucks, the mm -hmm. smaller ones. Then go to full-size heavy-duty trucks, which are kind of lumped together because a lot of manufacturers report them together. That's right. Um, and then touch on the SUVs, the big boys. Yes. The Tahos, the Suburbans. Yes, yes, yes. And also look at what's coming because there are a lot of trucks coming this year. Yeah, there's going to be some big changes coming up. So let's. So TFLtruck.com is our website. Of course, TFL Truck channel, YouTube, and you're listening to us or watching us on TFL Talk. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. Um, so let's hit with the mid-size segment, right? And I'm actually looking, I'm cheating. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at tfltruck.com. <laughs> there you go. There's, you know, that's a ringing endorsement right there. Now, uh, keep in mind that what we're talking about in terms of mid-size trucks, almost every automaker uh, that sells in the United States has a mid-size truck. Obviously, I'm not talking about the Germans, although that could change at one point in time. But all of the Japanese competitors currently do. Uh, we will see something out of Korea later, but we'll talk about that in a bit. And of course, the big, th well, yeah, the big three, because I guess Jeep is definitely part of FCA. Yeah, yeah. And so Toyota Tacoma is still on top, right? Toyota mm -hmm. Tacoma has been on top of the midsize segment in the U.S. for, I mean, as long as I can remember. Pretty I think. much since Tommy's been born. Uh, yeah, it's been quite a few years, maybe a couple of decades. Um, they, um, so most of these trucks we're going to be talking about have declined in sales mm -hmm. because of the year. And it was a tough economic year, tough, you know, year on, on many accounts. But uh, Toyota Tacoma still sold 238,000 trucks plus. They were down a little bit, about 4.5% year over year. Right. But, but dude, I mean, they're still almost selling a quarter million mid-size trucks in the U.S., they had a great December, actually. That's what's crazy. Yes, yeah, sales went up huge in December. Now, do you think that's because there were certain incentives? Do you think, because they don't sell the fleets, Toyota, or at least not with the uh, Tacoma, not so much. Tacoma's really kind of a personal use vehicle. So, I mean, what do they do to know, just to bump up those sales? So, I, I think, you know, all manufacturers do, you know, November, December, it's the kind of truck month. Right. Or truck sales season, and whatever you may have it. But, you know, in order for them to sustain that sales bump in December, you know, they were up like 39%. Which is crazy. That's uh, why I'm... Yeah. Uh, well, they have to have production, right? Right. And right now, uh, another tough thing that's happening is a semiconductor and chip, microchip. Uh, microchips are, are in high demand, but low supply. Yeah, some people have had to idle certain plants in order to wait for them to catch up, which is crazy because finally plants have come online. They've been able to bring crews back using safer guidelines and everything else so they can build vehicles. Now, the Toyota Tacoma is actually built in two different countries. Uh, yeah. The one Mex that they sell here. Mexico and U.S. That's yeah. right. So, so, yeah, so Toyota is still doing great. Um, next up is in the midsize segment is GM. So uh, GM actually, when you combine the Chevy Colorado and the GMC Canyon together, because they're basically brother of trucks. They are, although they do have some extremely different variants. Yeah, like the ZR2 Colorado mm -hmm. is not available as a GMC, for example. No, but the GMC has the AT4, which is kind of off-roady. Yeah, so when you combine them two together, um, 121,000. So actually, uh, almost half the Tacoma sales. About 100,000 so, vehicles less. Yeah, so Tacoma is, has a huge lead still. It does have a huge lead, but see, here's the thing. As we go into the numbers, 
new players have come on and those new players are definitely starting to eat into that territory. Yeah, so, I mean, T Tacoma is not, you know, uh, uh, I mean, they need to be worried at least a little bit. Well, at right? the very least, they need to start thinking about the future. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number three in the segment for midsize is Ford Ranger. So That's impressive. It just entered the market about a year and a half ago to two years ago, yeah. right? It got back, you know, re-entered the market, right? They were, they were gone for a few years. Uh, like, like GM trucks were, you know, had a hiatus yep. up there. Um, they sold 101,000, so they're knocking on the door of GM combined sales. Um, and also, the Ranger sold more than Chevy Colorado, for example. Yeah, now here's the thing about the Ranger, which I really do like. Ford brought in, uh, this is, not everybody loves this, but Ford brought in a 2.3 liter turbocharged engine, 10-speed automatic transmission. Those are standard. You mm -hmm. get that with every single one that you buy. And then you go up from there. And it's an interesting little truck. It's not for everybody, but you and I have had an opportunity to drive that thing cross country um, and take it off road in Moab and take it through the snow. It's a brilliant little truck. Yeah, I, I would agree. And uh, the powertrain is good, even though it's a four cylinder, but the turbocharging, you know, really wakes it up. Um, it, it's, it's really. Uh, a good truck, and I think it shows the sales are up year over year, 13% up approximately. GM is struggling, by the way. Uh, total sales for GM were in the midsize segment were down 21% year over year. Yeah, I have a theory about that, by the way. Yeah, what is the GM? I, I just don't think GM is adapting quick enough to the changes in the market. Uh, when Ford came out, when Jeep came out with these midsize trucks, you would have thought that GM would make major changes to combat those vehicles, and they haven't really done that yet. So, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, yes, right? Yes, we will. Uh, but GM for 2022 and 2023 years, those are going to be big years for midsize segment. Indeed. Because uh, there are a lot more new competitors mm -hmm. and also redesigns, right? Speaking of redesign, let's talk about the next one on the list. Uh, this is the Jeep Gladiator, uh -huh. and then the Nissan Frontier after that. Right, so the Jeep Gladiator, it's... Technically, it's about a little over a year old now, right? Yeah, it didn't have a full year last year. Yeah, it came kind of mid-year. Mid-year. Yeah, um, and there haven't been a lot of changes. But the thing is, and why I mentioned mid redesign, they have a brand new engine, all new powertrain, basically, which is this diesel, which is remarkably expensive, uh, but it is a new player. And in this market, there's only one other vehicle that currently offers a diesel, and that's GM. Yeah. That's true. And Jeep Gladiator in 2020 sold 77,542 trucks uh, versus Chevy Colorado with about 96,000 <coughs> trucks. So Jeep Gladiator, you mentioned price, right? Yeah. It's a premium truck. It's a specialty truck, right? Focused on off-roading and adventure. But they still sold almost, what, 78,000 trucks. Which, which isn't is bad, but it's not as good as Jeep had projected, by the way. They were projecting closer to 100,000 sales. Now, there is something, I have a theory on that one as well, and that's entry-level price, which I have to say, after, and we recently did a couple of videos on a base, almost base model, Gladiator, which you guys can find on TFL Truck and TFL Now, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Or, okay, anyway, um, we have a lot of channels. So the point is, is that if you think about what you get for the price, you're getting right out of the box a four-wheel drive truck that has a crew cab, right? Um... And they started around thirty-three, thirty-four thousand dollars. That may seem like a lot of money, but if you take a Toyota or a Ford Ranger and you build them up to that point, make them four-wheel drive with the crew cab, suddenly you're at a similar price point. So, it is an expensive truck because they don't have a base model two-wheel drive variant. But if you look at what you're getting for the money, it's not too bad. Yeah, and I think uh, the numbers kind of show that that people are still uh, excited about the Gladiator. Yeah. They're still buying it. Um, it's still kind of growing sales a bit. So, so that's, that's interesting to Can see. Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. I'm actually thinking about buying a Gladiator in the next uh, two years or less. Well, Seriously. Th there you have it. Yep. And the manual, dude. Oh, of course. Please, please get see, a manual. Only two trucks offer manuals, the Toyota and the Jeep. Yeah. That's it. So, I'm and, sorry. Go and I, and I got to say, dude, in, yeah. in the segment, um, it's, it's hard to say who's got the edge. The Tacoma has the sales edge, and I think that that's because of reliability, right? And oh, reputation. Man, yeah, the rock solid reliability. Uh, but, but I think if you compare truck for truck, like Tacoma versus Gladiator that we recently drove, right? Yeah. The Gladiator is actually 
in some ways is better to drive. Oh yeah, a little bit more comfortable. A lot more comfortable. Um, so you know, Tacoma cannot just rest. I would no, say no, and that's the thing. And that every time you have an improvement from another competitor, it forces you to up your game. So with all these new players and all this competition, and the fact that some of these trucks are better, it's going to force Toyota to up their game. Now, speaking of that, I wanted to get to Nissan because that's an interesting one. Yeah, Nissan, uh, bad year, 2020. Big surprise. Uh, sales Big year, uh, down 49.1% compared to 2019. They sold 36,845 uh, Frontiers. That's about half of what they sold previous year. Yeah, but there, there could be a couple reasons. Trouble. Well, there's trouble too, but now this is the truck that, as far as I know, has the new 3.8 liter engine with the 19 they, automatic transmission. They introduced it like half mid-year. Yes, right, right. They did. So what you're getting is this kind of weird in-between model that has an old frame, old body, but a brand new powertrain, correct? Which in general would not be a bad thing, right? It wouldn't be a bad thing. We actually had somebody who sent us a nice little email. We made it into a story about him buying that truck. Yeah. And it's a great powertrain, you know, I have to admit, uh, it's actually better than a lot of the competitors. It's better, I think, than the Toyota V6. Well, dude, the new, well, the new power plant in the Frontier, it's a 3.8 liter. Right. The most powerful V6 currently available. Right. 310 horsepower, and also has a nine speed. It has the nine speed. Yeah. It's efficient, it tows well, it doesn't, I mean, you've done some videos yeah. on it. But here's the thing, when you're looking at a vehicle that you're gonna drop probably between say thirty four and forty thousand dollars on realistically mm -hmm. wouldn't you want it to look new yes it looks exactly the same as it looked ten years ago so they need to update the body which is what they're going to do and then the sales will increase that I think will help significantly finally to round this out Honda Ridgeline uh, had kind of a mediocre year, uh, 32,168 trucks overall. Don't, yeah, don't they normally average around 5,000? Uh, per year or yeah. per month? So, so 32,000 per year. Per, uh, sorry, uh, 50,000 per year is what I meant. <clears throat> no, okay. so the previous year it was about 33, about the same. Oh, okay. So they're staying kind of steady. They were down 3%. So, so, so I think Honda Ridgeline soldiers on. They have a new model for 2021. But we haven't actually thoroughly tested the new model yet, so we, you know, we can't really say if it's you know, that much improved. And they won't advertise the damn thing yeah. either. Nobody so, knows about it. So anyway, and overall, this is kind of an important number. Uh, when you combine the entire segment, right? Uh, the total sales segment for 2020 was about 608,275 <coughs> trucks, and that was down about 4.8%. So, you know, if you look at cars and crossovers, mm -hmm. those segments decrease quite dramatically, right? Right. The truck sale, especially the midsize, only was down 4.8%. So I think there is still a lot of importance in this segment. Oh, without a doubt. Let's move on to the uh, half ton, because that's one of the biggest segments out there. Well, dude, uh, half tons is a huge market. I just said, you know, 600,000 midsize trucks were right. sold total. Well, for full-size trucks, this is half ton and heavy duty, right. both in the United States, 2.3 million. So wait, about four times four. for every for every one, uh, you know, mid-size truck sold in the country, mm -hmm. there's about four full-size trucks. Right, but considering the fact that we're talking about half tons, three quarter tons, one ton, you know, really big trucks, mm -hmm. that number makes sense, and everybody seems to want a, a you know half ton truck nowadays. So there was a big shift, actually, in this segment, because once again, we're talking about manufacturer by manufacturer combined sales, yes. right? And I know manufacturers like to split hairs, you know, they're, they're talking about different things. Right. Uh, but GM combined sold 847,010 trucks, full-size trucks, for the year in 2020, and that was more, significantly more, than Ford F-Series. Now, what was Ford's number? Now, that's F-Series. That means that's covering F-150, F-250, F-350. Yes, Super Duties as well. Uh, Ford's number was about, uh, let's see, 13, 60,000 trucks less, 787,000 trucks. Um, so the Ford overall was down 12% for the year. Yeah. Uh, GM combined was up 3.6%. So I they know. actually improved during this tough year. I'm sure they're popping, you know, champagne corks and whatever, uh, you know, with GM. But the thing with Ford is that this was the last year of that body style, 
that we're calculating here. For F-150, yes. Right. It's an all-new F-150 that's, well, almost all-new F-150 that's come out. So to me, it makes sense that their sales would be down. But unfortunately, what that also does is it takes away their consecutive sales crown, doesn't it? Well, not according to them. Oh, okay. And? Well, because if you ask Ford, so if you look at Ford F-Series, like I said, 787,000 trucks, mm -hmm. uh, the Silverado sold 594,000 approximately. Uh, okay. So if you ask them, brand for brand, uh, Ford over Chevy, over GMC, over Ram, Ford says, you know, we still have the crown because we're selling... But, but if you combine actual GM, yeah, GM, know. GMC and Chevy, when you combine them, uh, those sales actually came up and, you know, and we're number one. Okay. So what about Ram? Ram? Yes, of course. So they had a really strong 2019, right? Mm -hmm. But in 2020, uh, a little slowdown. Uh, so they lost about 11% down mm. uh, for 2020 and they sold 563,000 trucks plus. So they're... All, Ram combined almost sells the same as Chevy Silverado combined. Okay. So they're knocking on Chevy's door. On Chevy's door, but not yeah. on GM's door. Not quite on yet. GM's door and not on Ford's door quite yet. Yeah, but they're definitely a threat. And they're enough of a threat to where, you know, both General Motors and Ford have put out a lot of um, PR stuff about competing with Ram. And if I recall, Ram has managed to win quite a few awards, especially with their new TRX. Um, which is just a ridiculous truck. But nonetheless, Ram has managed to do their own thing. Are they still selling the Classic in 2020? Yeah, they, they were. <laughs> and I think they still are right it's now. crazy. So that is an old truck if you think about it, and they're still able to get out there and sell them. So that's part of those sales numbers as well. Yeah, so, but everybody says, you know, Ram is going to take over the world. Well, not quite. These numbers don't quite show they that. They don't show it yet. Yeah. Um, of, of course, we're cheering for all manufacturers, right? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, if we one want... does well, it forces the other ones to try harder. Yeah, so, and of course, TRX, I think, is going to create big excitement. I was talking to several dealers recently, mm -hmm. and they said, when you have a halo truck like the TRX, uh, a lot of people can't afford it, but they just come to the dealer to see it and maybe get another truck. Like a Ram Rebel, yeah, which would make total sense. Or something else, yeah. yeah. So, so it helps to have that you know, really, really high profile truck. <clears throat> I would agree uh, 100%. That's so there. now we're talking about the uh, <clears throat> other ones. So there's two more, right? Mm -hmm. So actually it's pretty simple in the full size category because Toyota and Nissan round yeah. out uh, this, this um, a bunch. Toyota Tundra had a decent year, about steady, mm -hmm. which is amazing for an old design. Right? Ancient design. It's the oldest design out there now. Yes. Uh, 109,000 trucks they sold. They had a great December once Say again. Say 109, 109? 109. Okay. Uh, just over that. Uh, they were down 2.2%. That's not so bad. So they're about the same as they did before. Right. Um, right. So they're not seeing that decrease that the Frontier saw, right? The Frontier mm. is an old truck, saw a huge decrease. The Tundra is an older truck, did not see a decrease. Yeah, but then we move on to the Nissan Titan. Yeah, okay. this is another kind of trouble area. Uh, they were down 16% in 2020. Uh, they sold 26,439 trucks. And that's combined, right? That's, that's both their HD and the regular one. That's the XD, the regular oh, Titan, <laughs> and for 2020 combined. So, mm. so that's what, 2,000? Just over 2,000 trucks a month, which is not high volume at all. They need to do something. Yeah, yeah, they need to do a lot of different things. And we will be talking about that in just a moment. But the one thing about the Nissan Titan, which I, I, I have maintained from the beginning, so have you. It's a damn good truck. And it's a shame that people aren't seeing that. Um, I think that Nissan is missing an opportunity. They need to discount the hell out of the truck to sell them. Well, I think, uh, and I think they are doing it to some extent. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed uh, we had some emails and, um, and kind of social media posts that people are seeing good deals on Titans and some other the other trucks. Right. Um, maybe they just need to more, bring more excitement. Well, yeah, uh, they're, they're, they just, need a redesign on the exterior for one thing. They have a great interior. They, they just now. did one, though. It's That's not the enough. thing. That's it's the thing. It's not enough. It needs to look like the Warrior. That's kind of the bottom line. I didn't want to say it until later. I'm going to say it now. <laughs> The war, if you guys look up the Warrior concept, what they built as a concept, which is absolutely just stunning, they need to basically build that truck. They need to create excitement. They need to get the American market behind them. And they need it to outperform any other truck in its class. 
period. That it just has to do that. They have the engine. They now have a transmission, which is a lot better. And they have the capacity, I think, to build a much more capable off-road truck. Make it your halo truck and then work backwards. Last time I checked, Nissan's known for building really, really, really powerful engines. Put one of those in there for crying out loud. Make it a $100,000 truck. Bring in the masses by building something that is fun and interesting. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Could not agree more because let's start talking about trends for, for a quick uh, yep. second uh, for 2021. I think off-roading is a definite trend. Overland stuff, I mean, that's still really hot. Yeah, every uh, single manufacturer out there, with the exception of Honda, builds something that sort of has an off-road variant that's like, you know, catering to Significantly the different. Right, right, yes. right, right. Yeah, and, and I think Nissan obviously has the Pro 4X. Yes, and it's but, good. Yeah, but they need like the Pro 4X Plus. You know, they need something or well, warrior type. Right, well, exactly. One of the issues actually with the Pro 4X is the fact that uh, some of its dimensions are a little iffy uh, off-road. There's definitely some issues about uh, ground clearance and whatnot. They need a taller, beefier truck with meaner tires. They do have a locking rear diff, which I love, which you can actuate and it works great. The truck itself is very flexible and capable of doing quite a bit, but it needs to be more so. Basically, you know what they need to do? They need to look at what the Trail Boss can do, and which has a G80, doesn't even have a proper locking rear diff like the, um, the Nissan does, but they need to beat it in every other way as well. If they can get to that point, and they can advertise that, then I think that will help them as well. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. And I, I'm just showing, if you're watching behind me, you can see the Warrior concept from several years uh, ago. It's just, and it just, build it. Just build that. Please, it's, it's I will pay you guys <laughs> a dollar a month, because I can't afford any more than that. Roman hasn't given me a raise in 10 years. But I will pay you guys to build this truck. Please, you a guys have a great engine. Put it in there. A dollar a month? Oh, okay. I got kids. Supercharge it. College. Supercharge it. Yeah. Supercharge the 5.6. I've heard of people who are able to crank out, you know, 500 horsepower, no problem. Look, you're not going to beat the Ram uh, you TRX. Know, TRX. There's just no way because you just on the displacement and the massive, you know, all that stuff. But you can still build something that at least on paper absolutely kills everybody else. Make a halo truck and make it that beautiful. Make it a hybrid. Make it really powerful, something. Yeah, they have to. That means developing a hybrid system, which would be extremely expensive for a, stra a cash strapped company like Nissan. Well, so would uh, su certifying a supercharger. Nah, that'd be a piece of cake. <laughs> okay. Piece of cake. Right. Or they have a V6 twin turbocharged engine overseas that they put inside the GTR, put it in that. There you go. You're welcome. Solved, problem solved. All fixed. Um, so, anyway, so overall for the full size segment, just to wrap up the full size segment for 2020 was down 6.3% in the United States. So remember, the midsize truck uh, segment was down about 48 mm -hmm. so it was holding kind of steady. Um, the full-size truck segment was down a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, minus 6% during a very tough global year. Um, so yeah, so still very, very popular. Like I said, 2.33 million trucks and if you look in the at, country. If you look at automotive sales, that's also including crossovers, which are still pretty hot. They're down a lot more, a lot more. Automotive sales have suffered significantly during you know, the COVID years, a lot of people want to call 2020. Um, so I think that trucks are showing strength despite you know, losing between four and 6%, mm -hmm. uh, especially compared to the regular automotive market. So at least here in the United States, it's pretty resilient. And I have a feeling that 2021 will be more of a rebound year. We actually might see an increase in sales percentage by the end of the year. And I want to bring up, up in, in a second when we talk about trending and going forward into the future. Before we do that, just really quickly, let's touch on the full-size SUV market. Um, it was mostly down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is not good news here. Uh, also, partly because GM completely redesigned their entire fleet yep. of major SUV, big uh, full-size SUVs. Yeah, new platforms, new suspensions, independent rear suspensions. I mean, all, interiors, all, all of that. All that stuff. So they had to retool the factories. Obviously, they had to switch over, change over, uh, part shortages, all that stuff. Yeah. So um, everything combined, they're still number one. Chevy Tahoe sold about eighty-eight thousand uh, SUVs in 2020 still, and they're still number one as far as kind of brand is concerned, and GM is controlling this market. You know, if you combine Chevy, Tahoe, GMC, Yukon, 
suburban, and Escalade. the Escalade, yeah. they have a lion's share of this market. I, so, I'm not surprised. Um, and Ford Expedition is there with about 77,000 um, SUVs. So they're still there. Durango is doing okay still, about 57,000. And I know a Durango is here because Grand Wagoneer is not. So it'll switch once we get the because the Grand Wagoneer has a frame that Durango doesn't. Right, it's a, a kind of unibody uh, vehicle, and then of course you know down the line I'm not going to mention everything, but Toyota, Nissan, uh, Infiniti, Lincoln, uh, all of those marks were down. Yeah, no surprise there. So anyway, so let's start. Uh, what's coming up in 2021? Because this is what's going to get people excited, right? And right. I just recently got a message from one of our friends and viewers. Um, saying that trucks are getting way more expensive, way more complicated, way mm -hmm. more complex, and, well, and luxurious. I would agree with most so, of that. So, so there's, I uh, absolutely agree too. Yeah. Uh, so uh, his point was, shouldn't there be something, you know, shouldn't more manufacturers build more basic trucks? Because the economy will struggle and is struggling. Yes. So people still need to do work, you know, hopefully find new jobs and do whatever they can. Mm -hmm. So the people, people are looking for more affordable trucks, period. Yeah, the, the age of $20,000 trucks, I think, is long gone, which is a real shame. So mid-sized trucks are growing. So let's just mention this. Mm -hmm. So 2021 Frontier is coming. This is a brand new generation of right. Frontier. We still don't have a lot of specs. It still hasn't made a debut. <laughs> No, we know what the engine transmission setup is, and that's yeah, about it. Yeah, but we don't know exactly how big it is. But all the spy images and all the stuff, all the stuff we've seen of prototypes, it has grown in size. Yeah, it looks kind of a little bit like a Titan, which is no it surprise. It looks like a baby Titan. Yeah. Like if you shrunk the Titan about 10%, yeah. that's what would like the new Frontier which would Which I be. don't know if that's a good idea or not. I mean, we, we have to see it in, in, you know, in person. Yeah, and, I, and they're specifically designing it for U.S. market. This yes. is not the same Navara truck. We're, yeah, which has already debuted overseas. It's yeah. a completely different truck from what we gather. Yeah, so, so that's unique. Once again, the price of that truck will probably be you know, 26000 or over, right? I would imagine that's a starting price if we're lucky. Yeah, so, so, so what should slot underneath it, right? Mm. But there's a like, new push for compact trucks, mini trucks, right? Yes. So Ford is still not confirmed, but Ford is working on one, right? Right, now we think it's going to be called the Maverick. They did, uh, you know, uh, reissue that, uh, that uh, what are they, well, it, patent the name. There's a name, there's a trademark for that, yeah. and then there is also prototypes and leaks uh, and images. We've leaked. even seen an image of a tailgate, which may indicate that it's going to be called the Maverick. Yeah, and there's one image from the factory, um, but they still haven't said, debuts, blah, 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 you yeah. know, here there's it is. There's no official so. announcement. So for those of you who don't know, we think that the Maverick or whatever this vehicle is, is not an actual, you know, it's not a truck-based, you know, frame-based truck. It will be based on the, a similar platform, which I think is called the C2, uh, that is being used for the Ford Escape and also the new Ford Bronco Sport. In fact, it's going to share a lot of components with the Ford Bronco Sport, we think. Uh, obviously with a longer wheelbase and a bed, but we're talking about a small crew cab, little pickup ute, or a, it's very similar to the Honda Ridgeline, I think. I would say it could be a little smaller than the Ridgeline, right? That's my a, impression. Well, that it. we think it'll be smaller, which means that it will slot possibly underneath the Ford Ranger. Now, in the past, they did announce that they were working on something that would slot underneath the Ford Ranger. But they didn't mention pricing they didn't or about size. Yeah, no, nothing. So but, we're, we're but, left with a lot of assumptions, but we think this thing is coming pretty soon. But this is good news, specifically to the point everything is getting more expensive, right? Right. That's specifically uh, good news. And I would bet, um, I'd like to bet. Yes. Uh, I would bet that we would see something about this officially this year. Um, I know they're busy. <laughs> they have a lot. Maki launch. Oh, and Ford Bronco has launched launch. what five different vehicles? Yeah, they're launching. They're launching everything. So, yeah. so they're busy. Yeah. So we know that. But I think this year we'll see something uh, officially. That's my bet. Yeah, and 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 we're we're hoping so. I mean, bear in mind, uh, you know, they they they're running behind on production with some of their vehicles, including the Ford Bronco, and it's getting a lot of you know press, including us. We're we're covering it too. But the other side of it is. It's always good to keep the public informed, and Ford knows this. 
So by having a new product that perhaps goes up against another new product, that would be a good idea. And there is another new product that I think will compete directly with it. What is it? It is the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Yes. And now that has officially been announced. It is coming. We have seen prototypes. <laughs> yes. We have seen a variety of different pictures of the thing running around, doing everything from towing to uh, running through the snow. And it's very different than the really cool looking uh, prototype slash uh, concept vehicle we saw years ago at the D Detroit Auto Show. In fact, we were one of the first to get a video coverage of it. Um, but the idea is basically the same. Another car-based ute. It'll probably have a subframe of some sort, I would imagine, underneath the rear end. Um, and it is built for light hauling. It'll probably slot somewhere either at or underneath the Honda Ridgeline in terms of overall size and capability, which means that it should be able to go toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with a lot of crossovers and have a bed that you could put stuff inside of. And yeah, I'm showing one of the prototype images right here. Uh -huh. uh, actually, it was captured, I think, in Colorado with a, one, by one of our viewers. So thank you very much for, yes. for sending that to us. Um, I would agree with you. I think, we, once again, we don't have official specs. Nope. But I would say this is kind of a ridge line. It's pointed at that, maybe a tiny bit smaller. Um, so should be affordable, right? Should be an affordable starting price. Yep. All-wheel drive available, all that stuff. So that's good news also. It is. Now, there are rumors, a lot of them have to do with the fact that there might be a couple different engine choices, including a four-cylinder turbo. Some people say maybe a V6, I don't know about that. And then one individual who's pretty well-versed in uh, Hyundai products is saying that there may be a front-wheel drive entry-level model that will undercut everybody in terms of price. Now, I know some of you guys are going, yeah, but it's not a truck, it's not gonna be able to haul the same. A lot of people out there only need to haul like less than a thousand pounds. And a truck like this that might have a payload around that mark could be useful. Now I say truck, obviously, with a little bit of a wink, we know it's a unibody four-wheel independent suspension vehicle, similar to what this Maverick could be. But in this particular case, I'm looking at the packaging and thinking to myself, this could be something that a lot of people are interested in now, especially considering that not everybody wants a full-blown pickup truck. They want something that's a little bit more comfortable and car-like. And plus, a lot of people live in big cities, right. so you want something smaller, a little park, bit more park easily, you know, maneuverable, so that's all good stuff. Right. Um, so yeah, so that's good. Uh, there's a couple of other manufacturers, um, speaking about kind of a mid-size segment, once again, so that's mini truck. Uh, mid-size segment, uh, their new players could be entering, right? Oh, yeah. We're I'm talking about electric uh, manufacturers. Quite a few. Uh, quite a few, but still, uh, like Rivian, they are saying they're a little bit larger than the midsize, mm -hmm. right? Uh, as far as footprint. Yeah, I'd uh, say so. And price, in oh, fact. Yeah. <laughs> 70 grand starting price. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's pricey. So, so anyway, that's... That, that doesn't help the affordability no. uh, story. No. Uh, but um, there's also like, you know, Bollinger with a bigger truck. It's and expensive. And Tesla might be coming this year, which we'll have to see. And uh, there's several others like Canoe. There's a new company in uh, Los oh, Angeles. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they're doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, they have a little van, also truck planned. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to see. But let's Fisker focus too. Let's focus on the manufacturers that are already here. Yeah. Uh, Toyota is unlikely to do anything major in this year through design of Tacoma or next year. Yeah, uh, and part of the reason why may have to do with the fact that they've been working really hard on the Tundra yes. update and, and new Tundra, basically. So I think they prioritize Tundra, That's it looks exactly, like, yeah. over the Tacoma. And Tundra, we should see, I'm hoping, soon, within mm -hmm. a month or two, like some debut of a concept and then finally a truck being on sale maybe by the end of this year. Yeah, yeah, and we're hearing lots of rumors, uh, twin turbocharged V6, hybrid system, crazy rumors like independent rear suspension I recently heard, which is a- Or maybe a, coil a, springs coils. instead of leaves. Yeah, I think something like that. Would be more because they're hiding, they're hiding their suspension in all the prototypes that yeah. uh, we've seen. You know, they have that hair hanging down. All that stuff. We, it's not the first time we've seen that either. Other yeah. people have used that to hide it too. But the point is, is that this will be an all new truck. There have been some leaked images that have come from other sources that say that they've seen the front end, which looks a little bit more aggressive and more cohesive. You know, it reminds one. me that those leaks remind me of a, like a Forerunner. 
you know, oh, kind of yeah. squarish, trapezoidal. Definitely just a little bit more of, macho than yeah, the current which one. Which is good, actually. I, I think that's very yeah. good. I just, I hope, please, Toyota, no more fake hood scoops. Just, <laughs> just, just stop. Step away from the hood scoop. Sorry, I had to get that out. Okay. So, so Tacoma is unlikely to be majorly redesigned, which mm -hmm. may worry them a little bit because a lot of the other trucks, like I said, the sales are coming up, right? Right. Uh, GM, unlikely to redesign this year. They just refreshed the face mm -hmm. just for 2021 of the Colorado and Canyon. Right. So they're unlikely to do a next generation until 2023. That's what we're hearing. Uh, that's what all the rumors are saying. Uh, they may have been slightly delayed by COVID as well. Yeah. Uh, for this truck, uh, for these mid-sized trucks. Uh, but when they do, I'm expecting great things, right? Well, I would imagine new powertrains right off the bat. Yeah, and the rumor is that 2.7 liter turbo gas engine from the Silverado will make its way Which into will the be Colorado. epic, because that is a fantastic powertrain. It has no problem hauling around a half-ton truck. So can you imagine that in a mid-sized truck? Yeah, and plus it will go head-to-head -head against the Ranger, right? The Ranger mm -hmm. has a turbo. Yeah, which is a 2.3 liter. This is a bigger displacement, right. more powerful. Yeah, yes. and they'll both have 10-speed automatic transmissions. It should be, then this is, once again, this is not confirmed, but we're, we're right. getting indications. Yeah, this is not official, but 2022 calendar year, next the following year, will be huge for mid-sized trucks. So hopefully some of these debuts will happen during 2021. That's what we're really hoping to see. And just recently, a couple of days ago, we saw uh, a prototype of a 2023 Ranger. Uh, with a new front end, maybe an old body still, right? Mm -hmm. It's an early prototype. But Ford has big plans, not officially, but all the information, all the rumors say that potentially it could have a Bronco and a V6. We're hearing two, that. 2.7 liter. Possibly a manual transmission. Maybe. That's uh, a maybe a manual. hybrid, mm -hmm. you know, because they have the power boost system and the transmission to right. make them a, a hybrid. Potentially a version, maybe something similar to a Raptor. Because, yeah. you know, they have the suspension from the Bronco that could, they could leverage uh, for this. Remember, so, the Bronco has a similar platform to the Ford Ranger, yes. which is why some components can be kind of pushed apart. Now, bear in mind that what we're looking at here looks like it's going to have a very similar front end to the Ford, the full-size Ford F-150. So they're going to have a little bit more of a cohesive uh, truck design throughout the line. Yeah, with a kind of a big C-clamp LED lights. Yeah, uh, that's what it looks like. Yeah, and it may also resemble the Maverick in some ways. So like a bigger brother, right, uh, to the Maverick. Well, that's the thing. It does look, doesn't it look just bigger in general? Physically, it looks like a bigger truck. Well, the front ones. looks more upright. Exactly. Right? Yeah, it does. It does look very so upright. So maybe that Maverick is going to, you know, be the smaller little brother that goes underneath that. Which yeah, would be yeah, it makes sense. Um, so Ford has big plans within two years to redesign. Yep. Uh, Jeep Gladiator may kind of soldier on with a few updates. They have the Mojave, mm -hmm. right? So they're doing quite a few things. Maybe a 4xe, the electrified well, What Gladiator. we're hearing, the recent rumors are that everything you're seeing that happens with a Wrangler can happen with a Gladiator. That also means... 392? 392. Heavy? As, as a possibility. Now, if you can imagine that much horsepower in that type of truck <laughs> would mean that it would sort of be like a baby version of the TRX. Yeah, it would. Uh, remember, uh, by, by, by the way, the Wrangler 392 pricing was semi-announced, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we think it's With like, like 70000 or more, actually. Yeah, it's so, more than that. So... Dude, that's pricey. That for a mid-size well, truck. This is the problem we're running into again and again and again. And I know you guys have brought it up, and we can only do so much. But you know, every almost every truck we get from the manufacturers to test are usually top of the line, which means we're dealing with trucks that range from fifty to ninety thousand dollars. And we know that that's well beyond the grasp of you know your average Joe who's you know working middle class and trying to get a truck. The good news is. A lot of these trucks right now have major discounts, and we recently got a video from a guy who bought a Ford F-150 STX package, mm -hmm. uh, it was a 2020, and he paid something in the 30s. Yeah, to, after all the discounts. Yeah, after all the, yeah, the yeah. rebates and everything else in the trade. But if you think about that, that's a lot more reasonable, especially that truck was actually a really nice one. Yeah. So, you know, keep in mind, don't, don't lose hope. Yes, we know these things are ridiculously expensive and so are mid-sized trucks. But there are ways of getting less expensive trucks. So Frontier, we mentioned already, it's, yeah. the new one is coming this year. We just don't know exactly the month it's coming. 
Um, and then moving on to full size trucks, um, I think we'll see, well, obviously, you know, the TRX is kind of leading the charge, yes. right? Uh, Ford is working on a replacement for the Raptor. I'm sure we're going to hear about it before the end of the year. Yeah, so that's going to be exciting because it's kind of it's going to indicate kind of where that's going. Uh, maybe a V8 Raptor, who knows? We still Could don't know. Could be a know. hybrid. Very possible. You never know. High output hybrid, they, some people are mm -hmm. saying. Um, and of course, we're seeing the F-150 Tremor, which is now the new off-road package that they have uh, that which slots above the FX4. It's, yeah, like it's between the FX4 and the Raptor. Yes. Sort of. So Ford is obviously, they're not going to miss, they're not going to miss this off-road trend, right? No. So well, the, they started the, the Tremor. It. Yes. Well, now they also have the Super Duty Tremor mm -hmm. and Ranger Tremor coming as well. Right. And so you can see where their head is going. They want to dominate the uh, 4x4 market. They want to dominate the truck market. And in doing so, they're taking all their vehicles and elevating them. Remember when they just didn't do a damn thing with the Rap or the Ranger? Mm -hmm. They didn't even advertise it, really. Not much. And now they're really starting to invest some time and money into the Ranger and kind of bringing it up and making it a little bit more of a player, which I like seeing. And the numbers prove it. Yes, right? they do indeed. The, the, the sales numbers prove it. And I think uh, Ford is also throwing a lot of technology at, at the off-road world, right? right? If you look at the F-150 Tremor, it has a sophisticated crawl control system. It could drag one of its rear tires, you know, to make kind of a, t a tighter turn. Right. Um, which is kind of a Bronco feature, too. Mm -hmm. um, so they're throwing a lot of technology. It's not going to make it cheaper. <laughs> no. That's, <laughs> but, yeah. But, I mean, they're trying to advance, you know, that world as well. Which, which makes a lot, you know, sense because right now it, the whole thing is technology. Kind of like the space race. It's the whole thing, you know, build, who gets the better technology out there and makes it work? Who's going to go to the moon first? Yeah, or throw or, a satellite in space first. Or Mars. Okay. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, there is one thing, by yes. the way, can I add one more? Um, now, we did mention FCA with, of course, their, their you know, trucks and all that. But there is one truck that is kind of missing which we're hearing may make a return. We don't think it's going to be in 2021, though, uh, if it comes back. And that would be something to replace the Dakota, which was their mid-sized truck. Uh, we have a few emails actually coming in and, and social media mm -hmm. posts um, because people are noticed the Ram 700 truck, which is this little unibody pickup, for example, in the Mexican market right. and some other markets. Um, and it has Ram written on it. Sure. Boom. Grill says Ram. Says Ram. And they said, oh, is this a new Dakota? No, we, we, don't, we don't know if it's a new Dakota. No, we, but we, we, we do don't. know this. We do know they've been testing in the United States uh, Fiat Stratas and some other Fiat-based vehicles, which are Utes, basically, you know, crossovers that have better capacity and they do have a bed. And they've been running all over the place. So I think it's possible that FCA, when Stellantis eventually, whenever they change, is looking at what's going to happen with both Hyundai and Ford to decide whether or not they bring in a either a frame-based small truck or a crossover pickup. And from everything I understand and talking over the last five or seven years with industry people, and I, I think they might be leading the, like the Maverick competitor. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is because they need to undercut, you know, they have, need to have a small price low entry price, right? And then kind of talk people into the Jeep Gladiator or maybe Ram 1500 well, exactly or it. something else, right? Yeah, and not only that, but if they're able to do it, I mean, what we're talking about with these, you know, Ute-based trucks or S uh, crossover-based trucks, th they're not trucks, they're, they're cars. And the good news about that is front-wheel drive bias, meaning that it's a lot easier to hook up a hybrid system, and there's a variety of different hybrid systems you can use, and suddenly these become very efficient vehicles, which is good for EPA numbers. Remember, all these trucks, at least the half tons and the mid-size trucks, have to sit within a certain uh, requirement that the EPA is going to push. And from what we're hearing, that is actually going to become even more stringent in the near future. Yeah, because for every TRX they sell, they need to counteract. <laughs> oh, FCA is crazy. They're just like, you know, let's put a Hemi in just everything and a Hellcat engine and everything. And, you know, they pay massive fines. Uh, for, and they do this millions uh, for but blowing. But the excitement is there. The excitement awesome. is there. Yeah. And it's really interesting because you see one side, you know, some of these companies are like, you know, we're going to do hybrids and electric vehicles and we're going to, you know, whatever. 
and FCA is just like, let's put the biggest engine we can in here, and massive, while well, they still can, because eventually it's going to come down to a point where they won't be permitted to do that any longer. Nonetheless, that's kind of where their mindset is. So we'll see what happens in the near future, because there's big changes coming to FCA, which will become Stellantis, which has become Stellantis. So let's touch on the Ram 1500 for Please. a second, right? So 2021 models are available now. Mm -hmm. They're being on, going on sale. Minor changes, right, for 2021 model year. There are a couple of noteworthy things from the TRX that right. kind of trickles down, yeah. down into the Ram uh, half-ton trucks. Uh, which is like uh, the rear camera mirror, mm -hmm. um, some heads up technology uh, for the heads up display, and also the trailer backup assist. Yeah. So the little system that helps you steer a trailer when similar backing up. Similar to Ford's. Yeah, very similar to Ford's backup system. Uh, and actually, I recently tested it in the TRX. Mm -hmm. That video is coming soon. Uh, to TFL now or TFL truck. So, okay. so I won't give it everything away, but I've tested it. And as with most computer-based systems, um, it's a little conservative. Okay. You know how you know I wanted to, to turn a little bit more sharply. Uh -huh. uh, the system didn't want to do it. Uh, so it's trying to be you know a little bit more protective, a little bit more conservative, like like any computerized system would be. Well, we know that Andre is smarter than most computers, which what? is why he started working here. Yeah, yeah. You know. no, no. Come on. Anyway, the point I, is... I like is that, backing up trailers, that's all. <laughs> I like doing it just manual. I can't stand using technology, yeah. to be honest. I just can't. But, you know, and some of you guys are with me, and some of you guys will benefit by using these new, you know, camera systems and everything else, which do make it a lot easier. Just something hairy-chested manly about being able to do it without those. <laughs> and I did it in my video, I compared myself against the computer. Ah. So you will have to wait and see who won in the end. <laughs> see? I, I already know who that on. Yeah. It's, it's the Terminator. <laughs> no. So, you know, the, the, the RAM has a little a smart idea with the trickle down idea. You know, you, they have their Halo vehicle now, which is by every, you know, in every way you can imagine that you can measure a truck, this is absolutely just blowing them away. So fast, so powerful, so capable. Uh, but this tech is working its way down to even your most basic 1500 Rams, which is really cool. Yeah, and I think, you know, it makes sense, like you mm -hmm. said. Um, then if we touch on GM, half done trucks, they're also making small updates, right? Uh, very kind of pointed updates. They've increased towing capacities on some of the engines, like right. the diesel three liter straight six and the 2.7 liter trucks. Uh, Chevy trucks now get the multi-folding, multi-pro tailgates. They're calling it something else. Yeah, but it's the same thing. <laughs> yes. So they're, they're making small updates, different color choices, right. you know, certain things. Uh, but the heavy-duty trucks are going like they're unleashed, right? For 2021, <laughs> the max diesel have one ton. Uh, I'm talking about duallys now. Yeah. Uh, one ton dually trucks, they're in a major fight. So... GM came out and said, we're going to tow 36,000 pounds in 2021. Uh, then Ford said, oh, by the way, we can tow 37. And then uh, Ram is like out there. <laughs> Never mind, we can tow 37 too. Um, so, dude, I, I want to do a big, giant diesel comparison this year. Because heavy-duty trucks are getting crazy, crazy numbers. The, there's got to be a point where they have to, you know, it's like, what else can we do? So some of them are producing over a thousand pound feet of torque. Yeah, the new comments now is Crazy. over a thousand also, yes. Yeah, that's just nuts. So I'm just curious to see, you know. Like where the limit is? Yeah, there's gotta be a limit at some point in time. You can only go so far before you're out towing, you know, big rigs. So, and, and it's interesting uh, because all these heavy duty uh, engineering uh, firms and people who are building these trucks uh, are now, you know, saying, you know, we're upgrading axles, you know, mm -hmm. thicker steel, we're changing tires to higher rated tires because we, we, yeah, we, they have we, to. we have to haul these loads. Right. Uh, they're upgrading brakes still. They're, they're, you know, additional transmission cooling and all this stuff. So they're now, you know, they're push. It seems like every year they're pushing it to the limit. And then next year they find extra stuff, you know, right. they find extra, which is, I love that because, you know, it's progress, you know, right. basically. And it forces everybody to up their game. Yeah. But here's the problem, Andre. All of this technology, everything that you're talking about, it's expensive. 
Dude, the new diesel dualies, 70, 80, 90 grand easily. That's crazy. Easily. That's crazy. Um, yes, you can buy a two door, two wheel drive dually, right? Yeah. Diesel. You might be able to do it for 50, 55 ish, right? Yeah. And it's a working truck, right? You can, you can make a business hauling, yeah, still a lot of hauling money. stuff. But if you want a crew cab, you know, high end luxury features, you got to pay 70, 80, 90 grand. Even, even without going super high end, you're still way up there. And it's just, I think they've lost touch with a lot of people who, you know, are proper working people who need a truck you can hose out the interior and tow heavy loads and, you know what I mean? Haul the hay. All that stuff is sort of being lost by these trucks that are just ridiculously expensive. And the manual transmissions are gone. Oh, God, they've been gone for a trucks. while. Yeah, yeah, that's a real shame. Yeah, so, so that's interesting. I mean, yes, that's point. Like, we discussed price mm -hmm. and affordability. That's a big point. Uh, of course, there are deals. But still, technology and this capability is driving this price game. Exactly. Uh, totally. And demand. People are buying them. Yeah, and of course, you might be wondering, like, you know, can you say more about the Tesla Cybertruck? Yeah. Or the Rivian R1T? Or, you know, we At don't, Atlas? Yeah, uh, well, there's other ones, too. Uh, it sounds like Fisker's considering building a truck, too. Yeah. So here's the thing about all those vehicles. The bottom line is, A, they're not on sale yet. Uh, all of them have been pushed back, or most of them have been pushed back because of COVID. Um, and on top of that, we just don't have the numbers. We have no driving impressions. We have no official anything. People are claiming massive torque and massive this and that, including GMC with a truck that's not out yet either. The Hummer. The yeah. Hummer. So the bottom line is, is that until we have our hands on them, until we get the tech information in our hands that we can report to you guys, all we can say is, yeah, they say they're coming, but until we actually have them on the road and being sold, as far as I'm concerned, it's just non-existent. Not until they're actually here. Yeah, and also, you know, it's. I just want to get our hands on, on yeah, it, right? Yeah, we, you know, we so, got to drive them. So yeah, so Lordstown just came out with a press release that they have a hundred thousand orders, but once again, we haven't seen the factory. I, have, I haven't been there. You know, yeah, yeah. they haven't invited you know major you know other journalists or organizations. And it's not sour grapes, guys. We're, we 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 function based on what we can review. So if if a vehicle exists. Uh, out in the ether that we will never drive, why bother reporting on it? Because it's just nothing. As opposed to an actual vehicle that we will get our hands on and we'll be able to tow with and go off road with and do everything else with, those vehicles, yeah, they're, they're worth knowing about. So the bottom line is that we are being told that we'll get a Cybertruck, that we'll get the Rivian, that we'll get all these other vehicles. Uh, and the Hummer. Too. And the Hummer. But, but we in, haven't seen one. Yeah. Exactly. Until we actually get our hands on one, as far as we're concerned, it's just not really worth talking about right now. But, but yes, there is a trend. I mean, a lot of you guys ask us, should I wait for an electric truck? Mm. Well, you're going to be waiting for a while. That's, you know, my, that's kind of my point So, here. so uh, yes, this, this year there will be a couple of them being sold. Supposedly. Um, but if you look at like what Ford has promised, they mm -hmm. promised 2022 for an electric F-150. Uh, GM came out and said this, you know, uh, they will have another all-electric truck potentially after the Hummer. Yeah. Right, which is going to be 2022. Ram recently said that they're working on one. Ram, but Ram was a little vague. Yeah, well, they're they, vague they, about it, but they said that they are looking at it. Yeah. Think, well, they're looking at it, I think is how they They need it. to stop looking at it. They need to stop. <laughs> Just do it. Well, I think they're going to be, there's the 4 by E uh, powertrain, I think, is going to work its the way. The hybrid, over. the plug-in yeah, hybrid. I think that'll work its that way. That makes over. total sense. Which actually. does, doesn't it? Uh, and, then, and then, I mean, the, so, um, yeah, if you want an electric truck, you will be waiting. Yes, and we we and we will be we will be testing them. You know, a lot of people have asked, "Will you test one?" Oh, hell yes, yeah, of, of course. The minute they uh, give us access, we're going to test the hell out of them. Yeah, so we'll be testing them and towing them, and we know that the range are issues. You know, the charging issues, towing issues, the towing issues. We know all that stuff, but we want to have real world numbers for you guys, and we will have that. So obviously, that's a trend. There's another trend of uh, electric vans. Everybody, yeah. everybody and their brother seems to be building an electric van right All now. these new companies have suddenly like sprung up out of nowhere and they're in, producing in fact, things. In fact, GM just spun off another company or created a different division, uh, Bright Drop. And they're creating a, uh, the same platform that underpins the Hummer, the Ultium yeah. electric platform, is now they're going to have a, a delivery van, for FedEx, example, right? used by FedEx. 
Yeah. yeah, but it won't be four-wheel drive capable of conquering mountains or anything like that. No, no, it's not going to be a Hummer with a van body. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? It's going to be a different skateboard, right, right. chassis uh, with, a, with a van body specifically built for deliveries, right? Which makes a lot of sense because they need to profit, and the more they're able to spread it out and the more they build, the more they'll profit. And the good news is by doing that, hopefully that'll lower the price of these you know, electric platforms for the regular consumer. Yeah, and we have stories about all these stuff, all these companies, including Canoe that's working on an electric van. Of course, Bollinger has an electric van. Rivian, Amazon van mm -hmm. oh, is yeah. electric. And actually, thanks to uh, our friends and Alex from California just sent us an Amazon livery Rivian van just on the highway already driving. Yep. So th they're getting very close actually to delivering those vans. but. We don't get to drive them because they're not meant for us. They're meant for Amazon. I'm going to still try. Uh, I'll, I'll jump in one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the Amazon drivers will be like, bro, here, here's a six pack. Hold on to this. <laughs> Give me your keys. Yes. So we'll, we'll, we'll get our hands on one, one way or another. But this is coming. And also, this could be interesting for like in the future. I know the range is not there yet, but for overlanding. Yeah. Right? You know, taking a van somewhere into nature and having battery capacity to run your campsite, right? And actually staying in one of these vans for camping. Yeah, and that, being able to actually get back home too. Yeah, Ford E-Transit, they're having an electric transit. Mm -hmm. Mercedes E-Sprinter, electric sprinter. Dude, you name it, every manufacturer is trying to do something here. Yeah, and FCA, now that they're combining with PSA, to once again making Stellantis overseas, uh, Peugeot has a lot of electric vehicles and they're quite keen on electric technology. So you're going to see some of that work its way over to FCA products as well. So don't be surprised if you see an electric van coming out of the, uh, Stellantis as well. And in Europe, they have a e Ducato, which is basically a ProMaster, mm -hmm. but it's electric. Right. So we don't have that yet. But no. But anyway, so, so but that, that tech might be combined yeah, with that. PSA. That could be coming very soon. Yeah. So for trans, uh, you know, all of that stuff is coming, and of course, the diesel trucks will probably tow all these guys <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, seriously, it's going to be a while until they can really compete head to head with gas and diesel trucks. But yeah, and we are looking forward to it. I think that both Andre and I are a little sick and tired of waiting because everything seems to be you know, pushed back. And we wanna drive these electric vehicles, and more importantly, you guys wanna know what the real numbers are about real world testing, and whether or not these things are for real or if it's vaporware. And you know what? Until we can really bring them to you, I'm just gonna hold my breath. I'm gonna say, okay, wait and see. I don't care what their numbers are that they report, I care about the real world numbers that we actually get. Yeah, absolutely. So there you have it, guys. All these numbers, once again, tfltruck.com. Mm -hmm. The off-road stories, specific off-road stories, are at tfloffroad.com. Yep. Uh, but also vans and all the commercial stories are on our truck site. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a great 2021.